Okay, in this example, we're going to take a closer look at the scanner class. So I'm using BlueJay. I'm looking at the payroll project. And one of the first things I need to do on the left of my source code at the very top line is import uh, the scanner class. And so we could use the scanner methods. So we'll scroll down through a source code. So there's the name of my class payroll. I have a few variables. And one of the new items that we just started to do was create a scanner object to read the input. If you are going to ask the user for any sort of input, you need to create an object to read that input. And on this line, right there, is an example of how we do that. So the first thing you want to do is have the name of the class, scanner, and you create the name of the object. And the same variable rules uh, that we've done before apply to this. So I named my object keyboard. You could have also named it keyboard, KB, really anything you want. I like to keep it um, something on the lines of the keyboard because we are getting user input from the keyboard. We have our assignment operator and we have a keyword new. So anytime you create a new object, you have to type the keyword new and you follow that by the class that you're creating the object in. And then we also have system.in, which is the opposite of system.out. Below this on the next few lines, we have several scanner class methods. We have next line, next int, next double. Okay, also notice that we're using dot notation in those three lines. We'll follow that with some uh, processing and output. But I really want to focus on these three lines. So next line, next int, next double. Before we start uh, analyzing this, let's make sure this works. So I already compiled. We will run this to make sure that it doesn't have any logical errors. So right click, OK. OK, so what is your name? Jane, Sally, hit return. How many hours do I work? Remember to keep it simple. And then rate $5. So there's the name that I printed out. And 10 times 5 is 50. So that works. What, but what would happen if I did not ask for my name first? What if I asked for a number first? So I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to paste it before my line of what is your name. So I'm going to ask for how many hours they work, then the name, and then the hourly pay rate. So let me compile and run. How many hours do I work? 10. Enter. Hmm. OK, something happened. Notice it did not give me a chance to answer what is your name. So it's ready to uh, ask me what's my pay rate. I'll put in 5. And the math is still correct, except I'm missing my name. Did not give me a chance to ask for a name. So the reason for this is think about what I typed in after I typed in the hours. I hit, ret I hit return. So the return character was actually passed to the next line. So when we got to what is your name, it already had a return character in it. So it wasn't able to handle any other input. So it moved on to my next input, which was my hourly pay rate. So be careful with that trap. So if you ask for an integer or if I ask for a double or um, a float, for example, before I ask for next line, be aware that skip um, your line of input. So be careful using next int, next double, next float before next line. What's going to end up happening is the program is going to skip over your input. So one way to avoid this trap is to always use next line before integer double, but that's not always practical. So a more practical procedure for not getting caught in this trap is to right below my number input, I'm going to do keyboard dot next line 
and that's going to catch my return character. So when I do get to my what is your name input, this next line is going to be free. Okay, so keyboard dot next line, that's going to catch my return. This is going to be free to run whatever um, input I type in, and next double is going to be ready to go, and we'll be able to calculate. So first compile. Looks good. Right click. How many hours did I work this week? Let's go with something different. 20. What is your name? Sally Steve. What is your hourly, hourly pay rate? $6. Okay, so there you go. So the extra next line was able to pick up the return character. So after we typed in our number, remember we typed in return, this extra next line method is going to pick up that return character and leaves these free to do whatever they need to do. So that's taking a closer look at the scanner class. Until next time.